Hi guys, it's Sherry. I hope that you are having a wonderful day. Y'all, let's make something quick, simple, and oh so posh. Stay tuned. And here is today's project. This is a part of the giveaway that I'll be doing the drawing for tomorrow, but when I was running through the giveaway prizes, quite a few of you um, noticed this one, and you noticed that I had clothes pins on the back, and that is what I'm using as the stand for my easel. And it turned out super, super cute. And this is what we're going to be making today. We're not going to make this particular look, but we're going to make another one of these. And guys, these are perfect as a way to brighten someone's day. This is perfect to give as a Mother's Day gift, but it's also perfect for anyone who needs to pick me up right now. And y'all know we all can use as many day brighteners as we can get our hands on right now. So this is a very quick and easy way to bring some sunshine into someone's day. And I am going to show you how to make this right now. So for this project, I decided to go with the black and white motif. And then I'm going to add just a splash of color. And what you will need for your project are three three by three squares, one piece of paper. It can be text white paper, cardstock, designer series paper, whatever you want to use. You'll need a piece that measures six and three quarters by four and three quarters. Then I have another piece of that same paper cut down to two by seven. Then I have a piece of medium weight chipboard that is five by seven. But for those of you who don't have medium weight chipboard, but you do have cereal boxes or mac and cheese boxes or something like that, I would recommend that you do a triple layer of that so that you can have a board that has the firmness of this medium weight chipboard. And then I have this beautiful paper. I love this print. And I have a piece here that measures seven by nine. And this will be the focal print for the front of today's project. So the first thing that we're going to do is we are going to take this seven by nine inch piece. And then I have my five by seven chipboard and I have added double-sided tape to that. And what I'm going to do is place this down but I want to place it down so that I get as much of this bird on the front as possible. So I'm actually going to do this upside down by placing it this way to make sure that I have my bird showing on this board. So I've got my bird down and I am simply going to go along the edges and do a fold. And now I'll come back and I am going to trim out my corners to give them that mitered angled look. And so I am going to use my tape runner and just place tape on the paper that needs to be folded over. And then I'll simply fold that over, use my bone folder to get this nice and stuck. And I'll do this on all sides of this board. Okay, so you can see that we have our beautiful board covered. And like I said, I just love this print. I think it is just such a beautiful and delightful piece. So now what I'm going to do is I am going to take this piece and place it along the bottom. And this just gives me a slight little breakup to uh, my pattern and gives me some more dimension and interest. So I'll use my tape runner to place my tape and then I'll take this piece and I am going to place it down but I am going to leave just a little bit of that bottom showing so when I put it down like this I am going to use my bone folder to get it stuck and then I'll just wrap this around 
All right, guys, so I have my wrap around done and I have placed some double-sided tape down on the exposed chipboard and just a little bit of the paper. And now I'm going to add some glue to my six and three quarters by four and three quarter inch piece. This is my back liner. So I'll take this and I am going to put it down, hopefully get it centered enough so that it looks decent. And then I will just use my paper towel to get that stuck. Then I'll use my bone folder to get that stuck even more. So now we have a beautiful canvas on which we can create some magic. So I have already made two of my spiral roses and I am going to make the third one with you. So we'll be using those three three by three squares and all I'm going to do is take my square and just turn it into a funky little circle. Doesn't have to be a perfect circle. We just need to have the roundness of a circle. And like I said, it doesn't have to be perfect and you can see that mine isn't. So now that we have it like this, we are going to cut in on one end of that and you'll see how I cut in just like that. And now what I'll do is I'll simply follow the shape of this um, circle that I cut out and just keep going around and around until I get to my stopping point. And you can make your spirals as narrow or as wide as you want. Okay, so when I get to my stopping point, it's going to look like a comma. So I'll just pull all of that down and you can see that I've got this little piece that is notched right there and then I've got the circle starting to come out. So what we need to do is the way that I do mine, if you have a quilling tool or you can use tweezers, whatever it is that you need to help you start rolling yours, um, you can work with that. I don't mind actually taking mine and pinching it and getting my little roll started. So I've pinched it just like that. And all I'm doing at this point is rolling it. And when you're rolling it, make sure that you're keeping the bottom of the flower even with the bottom of your spiral as you start twirling it inward. And that's all you do. So you can roll it as tight as you want or you can actually have a loose um, roll to your spiral. I like to roll mine fairly tight and then I'll let it loosen up at the end. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my wet glue and just put some on that bottom piece, the head of the comma, and then I'm going to lay it down take my spiral, let it sit in that glue and just open up to the point that I want it. And then I'm going to hold it. You can do this with hot glue and that's exactly what I did the last time. However, I had a nasty little burn because I stuck my finger in the hot glue. So I decided I'm going to avoid that this time. So just hold it until it sets up and the beauty of reptile glue, as you guys know, it dries very, very quickly. So now we've got our spiral and I actually like my spirals when I'm making them this small to be this tight. So I'm going to set these three to the side and we're going to start playing around with this board to decide how we want it to look. And what I'm going to be using for my pop of color, I have three pieces of pink colored twine and some pink ribbon. So this is going to give me all of the color that I'm going to have on this basically black and white um, piece of art. So I am simply going to decide first where I want to place my flowers because I really do not want to cover that bird. And I think I'm going to go with that placement. So I am going to trim this one down just a little bit and I am going to take my glue and just kind of zigzag it. And then I'll take my twine and just kind of meander it in my glue. 
just like that. So when you put yours down, you can do it so that your twine is actually straight, but I want to go with that um, meandering look. So I'm just going to kind of curve my string as I go along. So I'm going to take my next one and this time I'm going to bring it up to here because again, I don't want to cover that bird, but I do want to have that rose in that area. So I am just going to trim off a little bit of this. I'm going to take my glue and just come down and then I'll take my string, place it in the glue, just following the way that I laid that glue down. And now I'll do my last one. And this time I think that I'm just going to take and do it like that. So I'll need a longer piece and I'll lay it down in my glue and then just follow my shape. I'm going to let that dry for just a moment and then I'm going to trim off some of the tail that's right there. All right, so my stems are dry. So all I'm going to do is take my flower, put some hot glue on the back and place it down wherever I want it to be. And I'll place glue on this one, place it down. And then I'll place glue on this one and place it down. And now you can see just how cute this actually is and how that black and white and just that muted color is working very well. And then we've got that pop of color. Now we're going to take our bow, place our bow right there to give us even more pop of color. So I am going to place some glue on the back of the bow, take the bow and place it right there. And then I want to trim off just a little bit of that. And I am going to put just a little bit of heat close to that ribbon, but not on the ribbon because I want to melt the fibers so that we don't have any fraying. There. Isn't that pretty? I love how this looks. So now I am going to use the sticker sheet that I got from Tuesday morning and I am going to find something that I want to put on here because I think that this board just makes an awesome little uh, wedding ceremony commemoration. I think it's just perfect for that. So this is a happily ever after um, sticker set. So I'm going to place the one that says dreams come true right there because I really don't want to do anything to interfere with the beautiful look of that bird. Then if you wanted to, you could take even more stickers or some pearls or gems and just kind of dot them over this board, but I'm not because I like how this looks. Sometimes I think simple is best. You know, sometimes we can over embellish and this is one of those times where I'm going to make sure that I don't do that with this. I just want it to be simple and a beautiful little piece to stand out. And what you could do if you're giving this to commemorate a new marriage, you could actually put the date of the marriage here at the bottom or here at the top. So now I'm going to flip this over and we need to turn it into an easel. So what I have are these three inch um, clothespins. I actually have some that are four inches, but I couldn't put my hands on them right now. So we're gonna work with the three inches. And what I started with is opening it up like this. And then I place some hot glue on the inside. And then I'm just going to close it until that hot glue sets up because that is going to need to stay closed in order to give us the strength of a stand. Then I'll take my other one and do the same thing. So I'm just going to add some hot glue to the inside just like that. Then I'm going to close it. So then once we have it like this, 
we basically have our easel. And what we need to do is add some hot glue or some wet glue, whichever one you want to use. And I am going to use my hot glue. And then when you put it down, make sure that you have the end of your clothespin even with the end of the bottom of your board. So I am going to add some hot glue to the back of this. Just like that, I've got my hot glue. And then I'm going to take this and just place it down. And then I'm going to put my finger here so I can slide it to my finger and I'll know when I've got the two even like that. And then I'll stand it up just to make sure that it's going to touch. And it is. And I'll do the same thing with the other one. So I have my hot glue on the back. I am going to take this and just bring it to the other side, put it down, and then I'm going to slide it out to where my thumb is to make sure that it's hitting the bottom. And then once that dries, you can stand this up. So now that we have our nice little stand on the back, we can actually take our board and just set it up and display it wherever you want. So guys, it's that simple to make this wonderful and fun piece of home decor or special commemoration. You can actually take this and put baby papers on it to commemorate the birth of a new grandchild or a niece, nephew, child, whatever. The possibilities are literally endless because you can make this into whatever you want for it to be. So I have brought the other one back in so that you guys can see just how stinking cute these are and how easy they are to make. And I think with these little um, spiral roses on here, this really does pop and just have such a feel of elegance. So guys, I hope that you have liked this fun project. And if you have, please hit the like button. If you are not a subscriber to my channel, I would love to have you join my online crafting family. You guys have a great day. Happy crafting and we'll chat later. Bye.